Hi friends, today we will discuss an important current affairs issue that is unlocking space sector journey of ISRO from Apache to Vikram S. Recently India has celebrated a historic moment and it was a great achievement for India that is Indian first private rocket launched from the Srihari Kota. A rocket manufactured by the private sector has launched from the Srihari Kota and it was done by the Skyroot Aerospace Private Limited. It is a company, it is a startup and they manufactured this Vikram S rocket. So, this is a great achievement for India. Normally, when we looking into the regular news, will observe in the foreign countries there are some private companies like SpaceX, Blue Origin, Virginia Galactic, they are all private people and they are not the agencies of the government. There are different agencies for different countries like NASA, European Space Agency and ISRO for India. But these private people especially in the western countries like America. They used to launch the satellites, they used to take the people into space, that means they are entered into space tourism. Now today with this successful launch of Vikram S rocket, India is also entered into that list. Perhaps the time when India started its journey in the year 1962, we do not have a proper facility to launch a rocket, we do not have the rocket technology at all. But today, the Indian private people, they reached to a stage where they have started manufacturing the rockets or the launching vehicles on their own and they have started launching it. So, on this occasion, we need to understand the journey of ISRO and what is the latest launch and what are the specifications of this latest launch and how it is going to change the Indian space landscape in the coming years and how it is going to impact the future of the country, we will discuss it. Now, in this, with this private rocket launch, Indian space sector has proved and has demonstrated that we are preparing for a transformation. What is the transformation? The transformation is earlier the space research and space activities are under the monopoly of the government. Only government research organizations used to involve in it. But now wherever the talented Indians, talented people are available and we want to explore their talent and those who want to do research and exploration in space activities, we are ready to promote it. We are ready to promote, this is the demonstration and with this we have proved ourselves like we are going to transform our space sector. If you looking into the total worth of the space sector economy across the world, at present it is 440 billion dollars and do you know what is the share of India? India's share is only 2 percent of this 440 billion dollars, this is per annum. Now that means you are hardly 8 billion dollars, 7 to 8 billion dollars and this is going to increase to 1 trillion dollar by 2040 and we must make use of this opportunity and we must contribute more in space economy so that we can enhance our own growth and we can create employment and at the same time we can also provide the much more sophisticated techno savvy applications to solve the problems of the country. So, this is very very important. This is the 
target that the government is fixing like we need to increase our share and we wanted to get a substantial amount of share or pie out of this 1 trillion dollar by 2040. For that government of India brought lot of reforms. I will explain these reforms little bit late but I want to just start with our journey of Indian space research. It has started in the year 1962 with an introduction with an intro, introduction of INCOSPAR. So this is an organization that we introduced first in the year 1962, Indian National Committee for Space Research, and which enabled to setting up of Tumba Equatorial Launching Station, Tumba Equatorial Launching Station and this is the launch, first launching station, it is on the coast of Kerala, close to Trivandrum and at a place called Tumba we have launched and after that we need to start launching our services. But one thing we must understand, the time of 1962-1963 we do not know clearly how we can use this space applications for our regular day to day life. We do not have a clear cut idea like in how many ways we can really make use of this technology. At that time we have started demonstrating our technology. Once you demonstrate your technology, once you are successful in launching your technology, definitely you can do use it for your applications and in the year 1963 in the year 1963 for the first time we have launched a rocket or a launch vehicle so rocket or launch vehicle so rocket or launch vehicle is a vehicle which will takes the satellite into the space and that satellite we will use it for our application and in the year 1963 on November 21st, we have launched a rocket called Nike Apache. Nike Apache. This is not an Indian made rocket. This is United States of America's rocket. It was developed by the NASA. It was used in United States of America's Air Force and its research purposes. And we we brought a rocket from United States of America and we launched in India. And at that time in the year 1963, you just imagine how we started our journey. I will show a photo. This is how you have transported the various components of rocket and various components of the satellites initially to the launching pad. We use the bullock carts. And we use the bicycles. This is the journey of ISRO in the year 1962 and 1963. And finally, we have launched it in the year 1963. This was the launching station at the Tumba. This is how we used to launch our rockets initially. Later, we started developing our own rocket because this is not an indigenous rocket. In the year 1967, in the year 1967, we developed our own rocket called Rohini. So this is the Rohini rocket. It was a small rocket and this is the first indigenously developed rocket by the Incospar. And we have launched it, we tested it and after that we started manufacturing the satellites. So, if you just develop the rocket, there is no use. There must be a payload. That payload must be placed it in the space and from that you must get some applications. Now, we started focusing on satellites and by that time, whatever our requirements, we used to get it from the services of the foreign satellites. But for the first time in the year 1975, for the first time in the year 1975, we have manufactured our own satellite. The first satellite is Arya Bhatta. 
and we have already developed a rocket technology but this technology is not sufficient or this is not enough to place our own satellite in the orbit in the space then we took the help of the then ussr and from the kapustin yar in united in ussr we have launched our first satellite aryabhatta this is the first launch of aryabhatta from ussr now after that after that we have started developing our own launch vehicles that means our own rockets we have enhanced our own technological capabilities from the rohini 2 we started developing a different satellite launching vehicles like small satellite launching vehicle augmented small satellite launching vehicle polar satellite launching vehicle geosynchronous geostationary or geosynchronous satellite launching vehicle so these are the different type of rockets we started developing and over a period of time we have moved from one stage to another and one stage to another and today we are using this PSLV and GSLV comfortably and PSLV is the work horse of ISRO and when this concept of ISRO came into existence in the year 1969 and we have changed that INCOSPAR into Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO. Now, on the name of ISRO, we have started developing our own programs. Now, this is PSLV. PSLV is the work horse of ISRO. And it is a very reliable vehicle of ISRO. Today, we are using this PSLV for various missions. And even we used it for the interplanetary missions also for Chandrayaan and Mars Orbiter mission or Mangalyaan. So we used it. And GSLV is the next stage to the PSLV. And GSLV carries huge weight compared to that of PSLV. And GSLV can take the satellite to a much more longer distance compared to PSLV. And GSLV normally call it as naughty boy of ISRO or ISRO because it troubled a lot it troubled a lot ISRO because GSLV is having this is a four stage this is the PSLV this PSLV is a four stage four stage launching vehicle and in that we will use solid liquid fuels and we have manufactured our own engine called the Vikas engine because Initially, we used solid fuel engines. Later, we developed our own engine called Vikram Sara, Vikram Ambalal Sara by engine that is Vikas engine. It is uh, fueled by liquid fuel. Now, this is a four stage PSLV. This is a work horse. We used to use it in almost all the experiment and till now we have launched almost recently we have concluded this PSLV C 53 mission. PSLV C 53 mission. And when it comes to the GSLV, GSLV is a three stage one, solid, liquid and cryogenic. This is very, very important. And initially, USSR has agreed to provide the technology. But after that, when USSR got collapsed because of the international sanctions, Russia refused to give the technology. And we started working on the cryogenic technology where we use liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen to burn the engine which will provide the huge thrust so that the heavy vehicle will reach to the higher levels of height and with our own technology in the year 2014 we demonstrated that is what we have did it in GSLV. That is why you call it as naughty boy and you see the GSLV. So, the GSLV is a very heavy one and in the GSLV we are having the different levels like MK1, MK2, MK3. That means based on their carrying capacity we consider and even we have successfully demonstrated GSLV MK3. So, just imagine where we are in the Apache, when, when, when we launched the Apache, that is we 
what we imported it from United States of America and we reached to a stage where we are launching our own launching vehicles. Now we are placing the satellites in different orbits like lower earth orbit, sun synchronous orbit, geo transfer orbit or geo stationary orbit in various orbits we are placing and we are using the different type of motors or different type of the, the different type of thrust engines to the launching vehicle so that you can take the satellites to a much more higher stage. And if you looking into the launching vehicles, when we launch the Apache, it is not an indigenous one, but it is of 760 kg. That is the size of the launch vehicle. And when we did our own Rohini, it was 32, it was just 32 kg. Now today, if you just looking into the PSLV, it is 320 tons. If you looking into the GSLV, that is 640 tons. So, the weight of this much launching vehicles that we are manufacturing today under ISRO. And this is what we achieved under the ISRO, let it be in the last 60 years. Now, this country needs a different direction. This country needs a different direction. What is the direction? The direction has already given to this country in the year 1990. In the year 1990, when we reformed or when we completely moved out of a state-led economy to a state and private people-led economy, we have completely transformed our old models and we started inviting the private people into the business activity. Over a period of time, we have started privatizing, we started allowing both domestic and foreigners into the business activity. We want our own people to explore themselves and this country must make use of the potential of the individual to its fullest level and for that, we must not monopolize anything. We must create the avenues for every individual who want to contribute to this country in any sector. No sector should be monopolized. No sector should be under the strict control of government. That is what we have decided in 1990. And ISRO has decided in 1990, but ISRO has decided it in a different way. And ISRO from launching the satellites for its own purposes, for its own country's purposes, now they started offering the services to the foreign countries. That means after 1990, ISRO has taken a step to launch the satellites of the foreign countries so that the ISRO can generate some amount of revenue. This is how ISRO started commercializing its services in 1990. But still the operation or the, the, the manufacturing of launch vehicles, sending the rockets, these are all again under the control of ISRO. And under this ISRO's guidance, this country has achieved many things. Lot of various space applications we have started developing. Lot of various space applications we have started developing. Today space technology is used in many ways, in, in many areas. And you are having the, a remote sensing type of satellites. You are having communication satellites. Today broadcasting and communication has become the crucial part of our economy because services sector is contributing to the almost 55 percent of our GDP, our GVA. Now the broadcasting and communication is very important and apart from that, the remote sensing we are using it for agriculture purposes, mining purposes, fishing purposes, weather forecasting purposes, disaster management purposes, exploration of the minerals for different aspects we are using. And earlier if you take at one point of time, 
when there was a cyclone, just imagine the Odisha cyclone of 1999. Thousands of people and 1972, there was an uh, again a cyclone in the state of Andhra Pradesh. So, thousands and thousands of people got died because no one knows when you are getting that cyclone, how the cyclone is going to travel. But with this technology, even today, whether it is on western coast or whether it is on eastern coast, the casualties are less than 10. Sometimes it is in, in single digit. How come this is possible? We are able to forecast the weather. We are able to forecast the cyclones. So, this is how this ISRO technology has helped us. But unfortunately, this technology and this whole thing is only confined to one organization called ISRO. There are many private people in this country, they are interested to enter into this activity and they want to use their knowledge to explore many areas of the space sector and they want to contribute. But unfortunately, because of this monopolization or because of this uh, space sector under government, we are unable to invite the private people into this sector. And even we did our experiments like mass, this is a Chandrayaan and we did two experiments, one is Chandrayaan 1 and Chandrayaan 2. And we identified for the first time the evidence of the water on the surface of the moon. And we did our mass orbiter mission. And with a maiden attempt, in the very first attempt, we are successfully sent our satellites to the Mars. And it was the very cheapest mission. And we also launched our own space telescope called AstroSat. So, these are all things we did it and there are some failures, there are some failures and consistently various governments has given a support and because of that we are able to do all these things. But we need to continue the direction which we have followed and which have been following since 1990 in the space, in the, in the, in the other sectors of the economy that is unlocking the space sector. Till now, even though we have achieved these many progresses or these many achievements, but it is still locked. Only the government sector can do it. And sometimes government started depending on private people for some of the individual components and individual systems. But on overall, we never allowed the private people to manufacture the launching vehicles or the rockets or to start the business. In the space sector, we never allowed. But the present government has taken a different view. No, perhaps the time has come where we need to open the space sector to the private people also. Now we are doing a public-private partnership model in this. Because we have just launched, we have just opened this sector and just open this sector cannot grow on its own without the support of the government. So, initially we are allowing the private people to manufacture their own satellites, to manufacture their own launch vehicles and you can use the services of the government and if you want we will also offer some technological assistance to the private people and with this if you start enter into this. Yes, you can manufacture different type of launch vehicles, you can manufacture different type of satellites. With this different type of satellites, you can offer different type of services in this country. There is lot of potential to use this space technology for the benefit of common man. And as a result, as a result of this whole change in attitude of the government and as a result of the enhancing are the increasing application applications of space technology and also the freedom that we are giving for the private sector to innovate themselves has resulted in opening the space sector to the private people also. Government will do its own function but apart from that the private people will also participate 
in the manufacturing of satellites, manufacturing of launch vehicles and they will also make use of the services that are provided by the satellites and they will provide it to the people and they will take that services to the doorstep of the common man and this is how we want to utilize the space technologies for the benefit of common man and for the benefit of nation. The ISRO is able to do, but ISRO's services are only concentrated in few areas. And that is how we wanted to reorient our own space sector. Even today we are using the GPS for our navigation purposes. We have launched it, our own navigation system called NAVIC, but still we are not using it. It is only confined to limited areas in limited aspects. Now the thing is we need to allow the private people to modify it or to enhance its capability and also we need to take that services to the level of common man. So one thing we need to improve our performance, we need to bring much more perfection. On the other hand, we need to take that services to the doorstep of the common man. This is how we need to do. This can be possible only if other players are also be allowed to enter into it. And one sector, one organization certainly do not have that much ability to make sure that the services must be penetrate into the other, the lower strata of society. It may not be possible. Now, under this, we have started a different organizations. We have started an organization called IN Space. We have started an organization called IN Space. And we have started an another thing called NISL, New India Space Limited. New India Space Limited and Indian Space Promotion and Authorization Center. Indian Space Promotion and Authorization Center. And these are the new things that we have started. And what is this NISL? NISL is a public sector undertaking. It's public sector undertaking registered under a Companies Act. And this is going to perform the commercial functions of the ISRO. Earlier you used to have an anthrix, but anthrix is completely a closed one. Now we wanted NSIL to perform in an efficient way and also to assist the private people. And we have started another thing called IN space. This was done in 2019 and this is done in 2020. And IN space is an autonomous single window nodal agency in Department of Space for promotion and encouragement and regulation of the space activities of both public and private people. And this IN space will play an important role in collaboration of both public sector and private sector in the space. And initially it will act like an enabler and initially it will act like a regulator also. Because this is a very beginning for the private people and it regulates and moreover the philosophy of this IN space or the government of the day is to the, these agencies will act like an enabler. These agencies act like an enabler or facilitators. And this NSIL has already started its three missions and the commercial missions were so successful. It was like PSLV C51. C51, PSLV C53 and recently we have launched a mission that is India's heaviest launch mission that is LVM3, LVM3, Launch Vehicle Mark 3. Actually we have used the GSLV MK3 vehicle here and in this it is actually in this LVM3 we collaborated with a one web mission this mission has started in united kingdom and they are going to launch around 600 satellites so that they want to provide the internet facilities across the globe and in that process they want to launch 36 satellites from india and they have satellite they launch 36 satellites from india it's a completely a commercial launch 
and it's an heaviest launch around i think 5.7 tons of weight we have able to place the foreign satellites the commercial satellites into the space and india is having an another history where india in its pslv c37 mission where it placed 104 satellites in one go 107 104 satellites in one go it placed in different orbits so that means india is good at exploiting the commercial opportunities we are doing it but what about the launching vehicles so the earlier isro used to only offer the commercial services services in a commercial way but now we wanted to move one step ahead where we want to promote the private people in the whole space aspect that is the reason why we have opened the sector and once we open the sector many many private people are showed interest in participation of the space sector and one important thing is that is the skyroot aerospace agency which is an hyderabad based startup it was started in 2018 and it is not only the skyroot there are many other agencies like agnikul cosmo like space kids like bellatrix aerospace there are many other and according to some estimates it is in between maybe 100 to 200 the private startups are ready to enter into the space sector now what they are going to do are they just going to take the services from the satellites and they will uh, take it to the uh, doorstep of the people yes that some people are going to do but many people are showing interest in launching the launch vehicles and satellites and take the case of the present it is vikram s yes. the present launch vehicles name is vikram s yes. and the mission the whole mission name is prarambh so they named it as mission prarambh that means this is a beginning this is a beginning of the private launch vehicles in indian space sector now the launch vehicle name is vikram s yes. and this vikram s yes is named after named after the father of indian space program that is vikram sarabhai this is vikram s yes. and this vikram s yes is the first private rocket and it is a single stage rocket it is a single stage rocket solid fuel we'll use solid fuel in this and if i i'll give some specifications of this vikram important it is 6 meter long and its weight is 550 kg its weight is 550 kg and it can travel with a speed of more than mach 5 mach 5 means it is 5 times the velocity of the sound that means it is entering into a hypersonic range and it can travel to an altitude of up to 110 kilometers travel up to 110 kilometers and in today's launch the vikram s yes was so successful it has able to reach the altitude of 89.5 that means this is 89.5 kilometers it's able to reach it it has reached 89.5 our target was only to reach up to 80 because it enter into the space and this launch it is is a suborbital launch so what is this suborbital launch orbital launch means your satellites will move with a speed of orbital velocity orbital velocity is around 26000 to 28000 kilometers per hour and if you are launch vehicle able to travel with that speed then it crosses the orbital velocity and it will escape out of the earth gravity and it can enter into the earth orbit and it can rotate it can revolve around the earth suborbital means where the satellites will enter into the space but it don't have a velocity to escape the to escape the the earth rotational the, the the earth's velocity it is a sub but it is going with the suborbital velocity 
in suborbital velocity it enter into the space and again it comes back because the speed at which the satellite is moving is less than the orbital velocity that is why it reaches to some and again it re enter now the Vikram S yes, is a suborbital mission that means it entered into the space once it crosses 80 kilometers and some people consider it as 100 but Karman line says it is 80 kilometers. So, if it cross 80 kilometers that means you enter into a space. So, we entered into the space again we re-entered and it was fell in Bay of Bengal. So, this was the test we did and this height we reached the maximum height we reached is 89.5 kilometers and the range the range that means the distance the range is around 121.2 kilometers. So, this is the range and this is the altitude and why we did this and here we have placed some three satellites and suborbital mission is the first mission to launch an orbital mission and in this suborbital mission we have not only successfully launched our rocket or launching vehicle and we have also demonstrated lot of the technological performance of the vehicle and also we have demonstrated various subsystems whether they are working it or not. And if you looking into the SpaceX or Blue Origin or Virginia Galactic, they take the people to the distance of let it be 90 kilometers or 100 and they brought the people into the earth again, they said like this is space tourism. Now you just imagine India can also do the space tourism, but if you want to launch the orbital launches to fix the or to place the satellites in the orbit definitely we need to move much more ahead but this is the first step in that this is the first step in that so that is why it is important and with this launch with this launch already the sky route announced like we have so successful in launching our own first vehicle that is vikram s yes, and again in the Vikram series, we are having two more rockets, two more rockets and if we are able to do it, anyway we did it and we are going to do it, then in the next decade and we may launch almost 20,000 small satellites into the orbit and these small satellites having various applications, they can use it for anything and some, some specific satellites, some specific purpose satellites can also be used. A satellite used for a particular educational institution, a satellite for let it be one business organization, a satellite for only a specific area, a satellite for government department, a satellite for medical purposes, a satellite for mining purposes. Like that you can use a very specific satellites also in the coming decades. They have already announced like we are going to launch 20,000 satellites in the coming decade and this is only about one startup, this is only about one private player and you can imagine if the number of private player increases then what could be the potential of Indian space sector and how many satellites that you can launch and how much applications that we can get it from the space technology. So, this is very very important and till now these many private people they are there in the country but unfortunately they did not get the opportunity to serve in the space sector but now they are getting definitely this is going to create an Atma Nirbhar Bharat the slogan given by the Prime Minister where no more we are not going to depending on foreign country. Even today some problems are there, some heaviest satellites if you want to launch, we are going to the Kauru station of French Guyana and you are doing it and we need to overcome that because already our naughty boy is becoming like a, now they are, now it is listening to the ISRO and now ISRO is also doing lot of experiments and lot of other research thing on this GSLV MK3 and if it if we improve it definitely we can place the heaviest satellites into the geo transfer orbit and we are also going to place our own Indian people into the space that is Gaganyaan mission that maybe we are going to launch it in the end of this year. Again there are various other projects like other interplanetary mission and also the mission Aditya which is going to study the sun or the, the, the whole solar corona and solar uh, the, the, the environment of the sun that is also we are going to do. 
that is an experimental level. So that means ISRO, if the focus on some, let it be space related experiments, the private people can comfortably, they can do the space activities and they can commercially use the space for the applications and with this we can easily enhance the ease of living by using the technology. So this is very very crucial that is why this mission is very important for the economic, technological and social aspect also and this is a very great achievement and this is a very good and proud achievement just have an idea about the specifications of the Vikram and also the role of N I N S I L and also I N space and have a little bit idea about the whole journey of I S R O from Apache to Vikram S. Yes. So what was our technological achievements? Because technological achievements are important for our G S three and some sort of preliminary questions you may get it from the specifications of this different type of satellites. Okay, so this is something related to the unlocking the space sector or bringing the private people into the space sector. So with the collaboration of public private partnership, definitely we can unlock and the journey of ISRO or ISRO from the Apache to Vikram S. Okay, thank you. Amrita IAS Academy.